Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Adam Hancock and this is a video brought to you by the Sunshine State Company Real Estate. Today we are talking beach towns, but we have a fun little twist because what I'm not gonna do is talk about, you know, the main players that are on everyone's list, the popular, the tourist traps, and these Florida destinations that everyone seeks out. What I wanna do with this particular video in 2023 is I wanna go off the beaten path. You know, some of these you may have heard of and some you may have not heard of, but we're gonna talk about secluded, uh, discreet, and just give you another overall option for your next travel plans or your possible relocation. So without further ado, let's hop in. Okay, number one on my list in no particular order, I'm going with one of my all time favorites and that's Passa Grill Beach, Florida. Now a couple of really interesting things here. Passa Grill one is part of the Tampa Bay, Florida Metro. As you can see, this is a big area. The Tampa city center sits right here. Well, the more important part about that is Tampa Bay also contains St. Pete Beach, and Clearwater Beach. So we're talking two of the top 10, definitely in the state, maybe in the country as a whole, in the same metro of a beach that is not that. Well, then you zoom in here, you zoom all the way in, you keep zooming in, you keep zooming in, and you have a sneaky Pasta Grill Beach sitting under St. Pete right here. And what Pasta Grill gives you is it gives you a docile, relaxing, and balanced alternative. If you have a family and you're looking for a safe place to not worry about your kids in the mania, maybe you don't wanna walk a mile from parking lot down to, to Gulf waters like you would in Treasure Island. Maybe you don't wanna fight people over parking spots at 11 a.m. In that conversation, Pasta Grill, absolute gem. Okay, number two on our list, we're going with Lido Key, Florida. And this time we're gonna head a little bit further south to the Sarasota, Florida Metro. And you're gonna see a recurring theme here, because what is Sarasota, Florida known for? It is known for Siesta Key Beach. It is known for Longboat Key, Anna Maria Island. World-class stuff, right? Well, the problem with these beaches being amazing is that everyone knows they're amazing, right? So if you grew up in Sarasota and you're a local's local, I grew up in Sarasota, my parents live on Siesta Key, lived and breathed that area when I was in high school and younger. Well, if you're from here, a lot of people avoid all those beaches I mentioned and they go to a little place called Lido Key, which sits right here. Because the thing about if everyone's going south and north and you go central, you avoid the minutia that comes with it. Also, Lido Key has a lovely shopping district called St. Armand Circle, which is like a John Ringling design, really high-end beach district. It is three and a half miles from downtown Sarasota. And if you want to access those other areas, but don't want to be in it all the time, six miles to Siesta Key, Longboat Key is a stone's throw, and you really have a happy medium of happy mediums. Okay, number three on the list, we're going with St. Augustine, Florida. And you can notice real quick that I said the area of St. Augustine, I did not say an individual beach. And the reason I did that was very intentional. When you move over to the Atlantic coast, the east coast of Florida, which we're doing for the very first time on our list thus far, in my opinion, it matters incredibly more where you're situated north to south in the state as a whole than it does in the Gulf Coast. The Gulf Coast is easy. Those are very similar beaches to each other, and aesthetically, you can make style choices. North Florida versus South Florida are different universes. And when you talk St. Augustine and you go to North Florida, the reason I like this for this list is you might have one of the, the biggest levels of polarity and juxtapositions in the metros that sit next to each other in, in the United States. It's up there in that conversation. You have the oldest single city in the entire state of Florida with St. Augustine sitting a stone's throw below the 13th biggest contiguous city in the United States as a whole. So you have culture, you have history, you have charm, and you have a unbelievably unique historical beach town in every sense of the, the word, next to every big city perk you could possibly want from sports to culture to work, all of that. And if that's not enough for you, these are, North Florida is very different than any other part of Florida. These are Northern beaches. This is like the Chesapeake Bay. This is Delaware, they're Dune-esque. It's a different style of beach. If that's what you're into, then I'm not sure there's a better mousetrap than this conversation. All right. On to number four on the list, we're going with one of my personal favorites, that's Indian Rocks Beach, Florida. Now we're gonna head back over to the Tampa Bay, Florida Metro here. And if you remember, number one was down here, that's Paso Grill. Well, this is our Northern version. This is an alternative really to Clearwater Beach in this area. You're not accidentally going to end up in this particular geography. But the real name of the game, residential. This is a residential heavy area. Now there's a big difference on a beach that you might wanna visit on vacation versus you wanna come home to every single day of your life, especially more than 50% of the year. You might not want unlimited public access points, unlimited parking. 
communal amenities open to the public, not for exclusivity reasons, just for all the minutia that would bring if you could avoid it. Well, Indian Rocks gives you a sneaky alternative to the more popular beaches around it, which is going to bring you peace, more tranquility, especially if this is more than a 50% permanent residence. All right, number five on the list, we're going with the town called Watercolor. And this is gonna be the first time on the list that we head from this part of Florida over to the Panhandle. But not just any part of the Panhandle. We're gonna focus on one district called 30A. And 30A is a very unique spot that sits between Destin and Panama City. And it is how you picture paradise when you're picture moving to Florida. Emerald Green Waters, it's a group of beach towns. It looks like it does online in person. And when you're in that conversation, the dozen or so beach towns you have at your disposal, there's one that really pops out. And that's a place called Seaside. And Seaside is literally, not being facetious, is literally where the Truman Show movie was filmed. It looks exactly like that. It looks like someone invented a beach town and put it on the coast, which not only gives you new construction and beach proximity, which is rare in the state of Florida, but it gives you maybe the number one in the minds of the people when people are looking at visiting this area, right? So everybody's trekking in, trying to go after what they see on Instagram. Well, what made my list is the offshoot version of that. The funky version of Seaside, in my opinion, is a town called Watercolor. And what it is, is it gives you a lot of the perks that make Seaside lovely. These are a half a mile apart. It's a little funkier. You have pastel color painted houses. It's also much larger, which gives you larger homes. It's slightly newer, uh, more space between the homes. And I even prefer the communal amenities like the shops and the boutiques, but you're still at a stone's throw to access all of the other parts of 30A. But if I had to choose one to reside in and maybe to visit in if I've already been there once or twice, I would go with watercolor. Okay, number six on the list, we're going with Turtle Beach, Florida. And we're actually heading back over to Sarasota, Florida, my hometown. And we're not just staying in Sarasota, we're gonna go to the barrier island of Siesta Key right here. It's about a seven mile end to end barrier island. But we're not talking about Siesta Key Beach because what everyone might not be aware of, the barrier island of Siesta Key itself has three beaches. One of them happens to be, you know, the main guy that everybody's into, and that's Siesta Key Beach right here. You can even see the sand. That's very north on the island. Again, we're seven miles long here, right? Well, in the middle of the island, you have another beach called Crescent Beach. Very similar vibe, not a, not a huge access point. You got to kind of walk there. Hard to get to, but quartz white sand doesn't get hot to the touch. Way to get away from people like that, too. Well, all the way at the southern tip, you have a place called Turtle Beach. Turtle Beach, the sand's gonna be a little bit grittier, kind of like Cocoa Beach, Florida. There's gonna be a little dip that drops from sand to water. It's just not gonna have, it's a lot more residential, right? So you gotta trek all the way down south in the island to get there. It's not gonna have all that kind of thing people picture when they vacation. But if that is deemed what's important and you lean into what other people deem a sacrifice, you're gonna have far less people that go to this kind of beach. It is very safe for kids. Sneaky good fishing, one, because there's not a million people on the beach, so if you wanna surf fish, there's more availability, but also it's an interesting spot on the coast. There's a playground, there's a kayak put in, there's a couple restaurants, it's not like it's desolate, but this is another beach that if I was choosing to live somewhere on the island, I'd probably be south of the main beach, not north of the main beach, um, for all of those homestead kind of reasons. All right, moving right along, number seven on our list, we are talking Vero Beach, Florida, and we're gonna head back over to the Atlantic coast, as you can see here, and we're gonna focus on this little town right here. And as much as I would love to personally tell you what I love about this little area, I'm actually gonna span to on-site our very own Andrew Pench, who is a locals, local, locals resident of this area, and let him tell you in his own words. Alrighty, first of all, Adam, thank you so much for allowing me to jump on your channel and talk about what I love the most about Vero Beach, Florida. So where I'm standing right now is actually in Sebastian, but we're gonna talk about why Vero Beach is a retiree's paradise and why you should put it on your list of spots to consider when looking around and figuring out where in Florida you should retire. So point number one that we're gonna talk about is going to be that Vero Beach is nestled between the Sebastian Inlet, where I'm standing right now, and also the Fort Pierce Inlet, which is a little bit further south from us. This strategic location makes it an outstanding fishing, uh, fishing destination. And so for you retirees with the boats or want to go ahead and have a fishing haven there right at your doorstep with, you know, even between the lagoon, the any River Lagoon right there, you're gonna have plenty of snook, redfish, uh, anything that you want to make your angling adventure even more exciting. Now, point number two that I wanted to talk about is the restaurants. So, 
Vero Beach's food, what I wanted to talk about there is it boasts a plethora of restaurants to spread across the West Vero area, the downtown strip, and also Ocean Drive. And here you'll find a uh, diverse culinary experience to tackle your taste buds like seafood, Italian, of course, the freshest seafood you can get because look where I'm standing, uh, fusion cuisine. There's something to satisfy every single palate there too. Point number three I wanted to make is if you are a golf enthusiast, so those of you who want to get around and uh, you know go ahead and play as much golf as you want, we've got numerous courses. So Sand Ridge, Vista Royale, Vera Beach Country Club, the Quail Valley Country Club, you've got a variety of fairways to conquer. So imagine spending your days leisurely strolling down the lush greens under the Florida sun. Can't get much better than that, right? So number four, what I wanted to talk about here is despite its numerous attractions, Vero Beach maintains its small town vibe. So everything that we talked about, you get that without being overcrowded. So it offers plenty without ever feeling like you're overcrowded and you won't have to ever worry about the exhausting traffic or long queues that you'll see in a lot of other areas of Florida. So this peaceful tranquility makes the ideal uh, serene location for retirement. Point number five I wanted to say is that something else you'll appreciate about Vero Beach is it's no toll roads or toll bridges. So a lot of places in Florida, you're going to have to pay a fee to go ahead and go down those roads in order to get to the beach, maybe even pay a fee to park at the beach as well. So that's definitely something that you're going to appreciate with that is that we don't have any of that. It's completely free. So you can enjoy downtown, beach trips without ever worrying about the coins or having to log on to those apps to figure out how to do the, the parking that the way they do now. Um, you don't have to worry about that. So it ensures that your days to the beach, to downtown are carefree. And then finally, number six I wanted to talk about is you are a, if you're a boating enthusiast, don't live and you don't live waterside, worry not because Vero Beach has plenty of boat ramps that never get overcrowded even during the boating holidays like July 4th that we just had or Memorial Day. So finding a spot to park your truck and trailer will never be a problem. Adam, again, thank you so much for letting me do this. I'm gonna go ahead and jump, thank you. All right, number eight, let's talk bill bags. And here we're gonna head to traditional South Florida to the Miami, Florida area. And I don't know about how you think, but when I think Miami, I don't think secluded and I don't think docile. Well, in a world where people are traveling to Miami and they're heading to Miami Beach and they're heading to South Beach in these very populous areas, and that's what they're seeking, there exists a hidden gem and it's called Bill Baggs State Park. And to get to Bill Baggs, you have to take one narrow road south of South Beach to the tip of Key Biscayne, if you're not accessing by water, to get inside of a state park that gives you this beach access that is away from people. It's secluded, locals know about it. There, it's the path of most resistance if you're not looking for this, but it's the path of the most interesting if you are looking for it. So number eight on my list, I think gives you a fantastic option if you find yourself in the southern tip of Florida. All right, number nine on our list, we're going with Tiger Tail. And Tiger Tail is going to be in the Naples, Florida general area. So here you're gonna sit just south of Sarasota, Florida. And this one has a couple interesting things going on, including its history itself. So Tiger Tail is actually on an island called Marco Island, kind of a popular island, people are really into it. Well, Tiger Tail itself actually was a standalone sandbar like 20-ish years ago, and the result of a hurricane piling sand in an exact orientation connected it with the mainland, which is a place that now the residents can enjoy today. And it is a place that you can kind of live two lives, and that's why I put it on my list uh, most importantly. You can live the one life of going to a beach, having nice facilities, having a kept area, you can pay for parking, you can come there, you can know what you're getting and do normal beach stuff. Then you can also go a little further south and keep walking and you could get completely off the beaten path. You can get seclusion, you can get away from people, you can get away from all of the development and still be in part of the Tiger Tail area. So it's a cool place where if you're looking for both even on the same day, Tiger Tail on the southern tip of Naples, Florida would give you that access. All right, number 10, our grand finale. You can't do a list like this, in my opinion, without talking about the Florida Keys. And we are gonna focus on one little area called Bahia Honda State Park. And Bahia Honda, as you can see here, is this little red dot. This sits right below Big Pine Key. So where you have all these really populous places like Key West and you have Isla Mirada and Marathon, Bahia Honda is kind of a sneaky little hidden gem. You know, if you have a family, there's shallow waters. If you're a beginning snorkeler, it's very nice for that. 
Um, you have a nesting season for sea turtles. You could even kind of time your visit there. And then of course, if you want to venture out to all the more adventurous stuff, you have the fishing capital, you have the charter boat scene, you can do all of those kind of things. But if you're looking for something just slightly different, one area I would really hone in on is Bahia Honda. All right, my friends, that is a wrap for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already done so. Uh, again, my name is Adam Hancock. I own a real estate brokerage that is Florida-wide full service called the Sunshine State Company. If you are in the market for real estate now or 10 years from now, please consider reaching out and at least having a conversation with the team. All of our contact information will be everywhere. And we also have many other things in the ecosystem that are kind of fun and give you additional information you can't find here, including a newsletter that comes out twice a month, a ton of value packed in there. We have free guides, relocation guides across the whole state of Florida, uh, analytical tools, and, and much, much more on the sunshinestateco.com. And if I can help you in just any general way at all, please consider reaching out. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.